We're talking about a very fundamental human truth here, about the effects of inequality. But this isn't simply something that affects the poor. The differences I've been showing you are too big to be driven just by what happens to the poorest 10% of the population. They're so large because we are all affected by inequality. But you don't have to just infer that from the scale of the differences when we can compare people in more and less equal countries across the social hierarchy, we can see that at every level in the social hierarchy, people do better in a more equal country. And if you're going to generalize about the effects of inequality, that's as close as we can get to, I think, a true generalization. That inequality affects the vast majority of the population. It damages us all but its effects are biggest at the bottom of society. You've seen just in the few graphs I've shown you, and there are many more in our book, that it's always the same countries that do badly. <coughs> it's the USA, Portugal, UK. And whether we're talking about prison populations or health or obesity or mental illness, it's always those countries that do badly. And at the other end, it's always the same ones that do well, the Nordic countries and Japan. But uh, that means that what we're looking at is a pattern of general social dysfunction related to inequality. It's not just one or two things that go wrong, it's most things that go wrong. The other point is that if you look at Sweden and Japan down there, they both do well, but they are as different two societies as you could possibly get in the rich world. Think of the position of women in those societies, and yet they both do well, despite being at cultural opposites. But they are also very different in how they get their greater equality. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, Sweden has large income differences, large differences in earnings, but it then redistributes with high taxes and benefits and its in in income differences are narrowed. Japan starts off with small income differences between rich and poor. It has lower taxes um, and a smaller welfare state, and yet it too does well. We find the same contrast amongst the American states. One of the states that does quite well, not the best, is uh, New Hampshire. It has lower state taxes than any state except Alaska. One of the things it does have, which uh, make, I think is part of this picture, um, which leads to narrower differences in earnings before taxes, is it has strong trade unions. Uh, you are not allowed to uh, get someone to sign a contract of employment banning trade union membership. You are not allowed to organize strike breaking. It's illegal in New Hampshire. Strong trade union movements seem consistently to be part of more equal societies. It's really important work that trade unions do in relation to all these things. And it has many more benefits than I think that many people in the trade union movement are aware of. So it doesn't matter how you get your greater equality, whether through redistribution, through taxes and benefits, or whether by reducing income differences to start with. I came at this as an epidemiologist working in a medical school, working on the health inequalities between rich and poor within our societies. The big change in our understanding of the drivers of health in the rich countries is how important psychosocial things seem to be. What causes the problems fundamentally is what you feel about your circumstances. But the main groups of uh, psychosocial risk factors in our societies are these ones. Low social status itself is a cause of chronic stress. Lack of friends, not having a good relationship with your partner or not being involved in community life, any measure of your social involvement is protective of health. Social isolation is damaging. And stress in early life, but looking at those three groups of psychosocial risk factor, these causes of chronic stress, 
it seemed to me they were telling us one, about one underlying cause of stress, that the insecurities that go with low social status are rather like the insecurities that come from a difficult early childhood. And that friendship fits into that pattern. I think I better not take any more, up any more time, except to say in, all our, in, in so many of our societies, inequality has risen since about uh, uh, 1980, uh, first in the English-speaking countries, driven by politics, by neoliberalism, by monetarism, by the new political thinking that came in with that. But you see, what we have to do overall is realize that the way of improving the quality of life in our societies now is no longer by consumerism, by status competition, uh, by economic growth. Economic growth no longer holds the key to increasing human welfare in the rich countries. It's very important still in the poorer countries. But for us now, the way we now should be improving the quality of, uh, the real quality of human life is by improving the quality of social relationships, the social environment. And to do that, we do not need just to go to, sh we do, the answer isn't all to go to and get psychiatric attention. What this really says is that you can improve the psychosocial well-being of whole populations by narrowing the income differences between us. It's really very exciting that we have a policy handle now on the psychosocial well-being of whole societies. I think I better not take any more, up any more time, except to say in, all our, in, in so many of our societies, inequality has risen since about uh, uh, 1980, uh, first in the English-speaking countries, driven by politics, by neoliberalism, by monetarism, by the new political thinking that came in with that. But you see, what we have to do overall is realize that the way of improving the quality of life in our societies now is no longer by consumerism, by status competition, uh, by economic growth. Economic growth no longer holds the key to increasing human welfare in the rich countries. It's very important still in the poorer countries. But for us now, the way we now should be improving the quality of, uh, the real quality of human life is by improving the quality of social relationships, the social environment. And to do that, we do not need just to go to, sh we do, the answer isn't all to go to and get psychiatric attention. What this really says is that you can improve the psychosocial well-being of whole populations by narrowing the income differences between us. It's really very exciting that we have a policy handle now on the psychosocial well-being of whole societies. Um, you've probably had too much of this already, but if you want slides, uh, you can get them on our Equality Trust website. The book contains the data. There is the German edition. I can't remember what it's called now. Um, uh, my, my German is non-existent, but there is a German edition. And we show that each chapter takes a different social problem, whether it's health or violence or drugs, and it goes through the data internationally and amongst the American states, and then suggests the causal uh, pathways, the causal mechanisms linking those problems to inequality. I'll stop there, thank you.